Dear listeners, and welcome to another episode of Extra Extra. It's all about whiskey. As always, I'm your host, Jason Johnston Yellen, and here next to me is the cherubic Joshua Hatton. Welcome, Joshua. I remain cherubic, even from last episode. Always. All right. Did I call you cherubic last time as well? You did. You did. Yeah, I'm remarking on my hair, and you made a mention of the Goonies, which we've received you know, loads of listener email you know, coming to my defense, and so I appreciate all of that. Yeah, dear <laughs> listeners, defending me. As somebody who looks through the inbox, I know none of that to be true, so oh, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in Extra Extra Joshua, you and I take a new story, mm-hmm. and we spend 10 or 15 minutes reading through it, occasionally making side comments, and then in the second half of our episode, we spend another 10 or 15 minutes breaking down the story at hand. And... The last couple of episodes of Extra Extra, we focused on the tariffs. We ah, we're taking the tariffs hard, but we did our best to put a. Was it a positive spin? I did. I did have a very good friend reach out and say, "I am writing to my senators right now." Lovely. And that was your advice at the end of the second episode where we talked about that. Yeah. So we're not going to cover the tariffs today. We're going to do something else. It's your turn to bring the story to our attention. Mm-hmm. What are we discussing today? Cherubic, Joshua. (laughs) Well, today's subject is going to be on labeling. And so I've found an article on the Spirits Business that discusses UK labeling, but I think that the overall discussion can be extended to labeling here in the US as well. So seeing as we have a pretty international audience, I thought that this would tick many a box. Okay, Yep. labeling. Yep. Hold on tight to your socks, because this might just blow them off. <laughs> so the, the headline is a very long headline. And again, this is from the Spirits Business. And the headline says, Trade body, the Portman Group, has hit out at a recent report on alcohol labeling in the UK, claiming it is, quote, utter nonsense and based on outdated information. Whoa. If this was the dairy industry, that headline would say utter nonsense. Oh, gosh. But it's not the dairy it's, it's industry, not. and so we will yeah. carry on in the spirits world. <laughs> so there, there is... Knowing no, that an opportunity was missed. There is no author tied to this piece. I just gave you the headline. Now I'm carrying on with the, with the, the content, the body of the article. It says the Alcohol Health Alliance, here on out we will just refer to them as the AHA, published its, quote, drinking in the dark. <laughs> hold yeah. on, yeah. hold on, hold on. We're going to refer to them as AHA. AHA. <laughs> well, take on me. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh yeah, and the the article headline is Drinking in the Dark How Alcohol Labeling Fails Consumers. Anyway, so the the aha uh published its quote Drinking in the Dark How Alcohol Labeling Fails Consumers report this week, which is based on an audit from October 2019. The findings from October okay. were first published by the AHA in March 2020 and have now been used as the basis for the new report. So the AHA examined labels on 424 alcohol products in shops across the UK to see whether the labels provided the chief medical officer's weekly guideline. So I imagine the chief medical officer is very similar to our Surgeon General here in the yep. U.S. Yep. And it says the CMO currently recommends that adults do not drink more than 14 units of alcohol on a regular basis. It's optional as to whether producers include this guidance on packaging and labels. The report claims that the CMO guidelines remain absent from more than 70% of alcohol containers across the UK four years after they were introduced, while nearly a quarter, 24% to be precise, 
contained misleading, out-of-date health information. <laughs> the, the well, a, yeah. if it's misleading, it's going to fit right in here. So <laughs> the AHA also said that only 2% of the Portman Group's members include the guidelines on their labels, which is kind of interesting. In response to the AHA's claims, Jonathan Timothy, CEO of the Portman Group, branded the report as, quote, utter nonsense. I wonder if he did come from the dairy industry, because if so, that, <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> and noted it was based on an audit from 10 months ago. He says, quote, the report is utter nonsense based on out-of-date information and the typical anti-alcohol ideology of the AHA who can't stand the fact that the moderate majority can sensibly enjoy a drink and stick within the 14-unit guidance, end quote. Timothy, so oh, pa- yeah, go ahead. Pa- pausing just for a second, because we're, we're throwing units around, and, and I guarantee you mm. virtually nobody in the United Kingdom really knows what a unit pertains to. And here in the US, we've got even less chance uh, mm-hmm. of following that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so just to give an idea, as a single small shot of spirits of alcohol, around 40% alcohol, tw- a 25 mil pour, so just slightly smaller than an ounce, is one unit. A can of lager or beer or cider, mm. which is 440 mils, so what's that, about 15 fluid ounces? Yeah. At, at 5.5% alcohol is two units. So one and beer then, is two units then. Like if it's exactly. a 16 ounce beer, okay. Exactly. And then a pint of higher strength lager, beer or cider. And that's interesting. Okay, so a can at 440, but a pint. Oh yeah, because for us a pint is 20 fluid ounces. Mm-hmm. And so 20 fluid ounces around that same 5, 5.5% five ABV would be three units. So imagine putting together your weekly allowance of 14 units and one shot of whiskey at 40% alcohol is one fourteenth of your weekly allowance. You and I have done that in a day. <laughs> right? <laughs> you and I have done that in the morning. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So that's that. So the that units, puts the units add up real fast. Is yeah, the they, point they they do, especially when you hear you know a, t- a twenty ounce pint. Of course, pints in the U.S. are, are sixteen ounce, so it's a different system. But still, you're looking at between two and three units, depending on how you measure a pint. Which exactly shit, man. That that adds up fast. Anyway, so. It goes on, it says, Timothy also noted that two of its members, Heineken and Budweiser Brewing Group, which represent more than half of the UK's beer and cider market, have full CMO guidance on more than 60% of their products. Timothy added, quote, our members are leaders in the industry, ensuring for over 30 years that the sector is responsible and in that time have seen significant declines in alcohol consumption, youth drinking, drink driving, and alcohol-related crime, end quote. In August last year, the Portman Group called for the producers to include the CMO's 14-unit drink guidelines on labels. The audit also found that more than half, 56% to be exact, of labels included no nutritional information. It noted that 37% of labels listed only the calorie content of the container and 7% displayed a full nutritional information label. The release of the AHA report comes just a month after the UK government announced it would launch a a consultation regarding plans to provide calorie labeling on alcoholic beverages to tackle obesity. The Portman Group previously said that many producers had already committed to providing nutrition and calorie information on PAC and online by 2022. We're almost done here, by the way. Okay. And now the next segment of this article comes under two words that have been in bold, they're in bold, and single quotations around them. Please let it be utter nonsense. Please let it be utter nonsense. They've only used it three times so far. No, they're changing it up. It says, 
Ugh. woefully inadequate. Oh, I like that too. That's good, mm-hmm. strong right. language. Right. Woefully yeah. inadequate. Yeah, right. Which which Gosh. sounds like an issue in the bedroom. But anyway, let me continue on. The AHA believes the current system for alcohol labeling, quote, fails to provide customers with adequate information to make healthy decisions about their purchases, end quote. Sir Ian Gilmore, the chair of the AHA UK, oh. says, quote, not to be, that. Oh, I was going to say David Gilmore's brother, <laughs> says, quote, Alcohol labeling in this country is woefully inadequate and not fit for purpose if we wish to build a healthier society. It's disappointing but telling that the members of the Portman Group, the body purporting to promote best practices on labeling of alcohol products, are least likely to display basic health information. It's time that health labeling is required for all products. The quote continues, and the article is going to end with this quote. The public must be granted the power to make informed decisions about their health by having access to prominent health warnings, the information on ingredients, nutrition, and alcohol content at the point of purchase. The industry's reluctance to include this information on their products suggests profits are being put ahead of people's Health. End quote. End of article. I am ready to tear the shit out of this. Let's go to a <laughs> quick intermission and we'll be right back. I'm going to cede the floor to you, Joshua, because I know what... I want to say in ripping this a new one, but you brought it to our attention. And I'm curious, as the United Statesman looking over the water at the United Kingdom, what was your take on (laughs) this infuriating article? Well, that's a really good question. I think from from the standpoint of food, having calorie intake having sodium intake right you know how much protein is in it how much fat is in it like i think that that can be an important inclusion to food but i'm not so sure that it works for alcohol now i i I could be wrong but i i don't know how much of a sway that is going to have on people. I'll give you. I'll give you the perfect example, right? My wife, <laughs> when she is not a whiskey drinker, but she's a beer drinker and she's a wine drinker, and she enjoys good flavors, but she's not a snob by any stretch of the imagination. What she looks at is what are the styles that I enjoy, and how much alcohol is in that. And quite often, she will reach for the thing that has more alcohol because she looks at it from a different perspective of, look, these are going to be empty calories regardless. But I want to A, drink something that tastes good, and B, because the world sucks right now, I want something that's going to get me closer to point B a bit quicker than something that has a bit less alcohol in it. But she's also a very smart person that knows her limits, knows her boundaries, and and, and doesn't overstep that. And, well, yeah, go ahead. And that speaks to me about the conflict in the article is they, they threw out curbing underage drinking, right? I think we can generally agree that's a good thing. Yes. They they talked about curbing drink driving. Mm-hmm. I think we can agree that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. And and for our American listeners, that is drunk driving. You know, it's just a different pronunciation <laughs> <laughs> and spelled differently. Drinking and driving. There you go. Which which is interesting, right? For you and I going over to Scotland, when it says, you know, in recent history, drunk driving, drink driving, has has really diminished across the United Kingdom, 
you and I know from being there, mm -hmm. everybody talks about avoiding it. We now go out with people and if somebody has the car keys, they will literally not have one drink. Because it's zero they tolerance. Have, yeah, They won't even have half a drink. It is now at the point of zero. And so so we have. We've seen this with our own two eyes. And, and you know, I, I think curbing drunk driving is a good thing. Now, when you talk about calorie information to allow consumers <laughs> to make smart choices... You know, I think we all generally understand that drinking whiskey, beer and wine will make us fatter. Yeah. I think we generally understand that. Now, if you're going to tell me that, you know, one pint of beer is going to equal one donut and I'm maybe going to make a decision of a day, oh, I'm going out with my friends tonight, I'm going to have a few pints, I'm probably going to lay off the donuts at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. But I can understand that type of calculus that's being made there. Mm -hmm. But the precise information, the precise labeling of it, I just don't think is something we we need at all. Mm. And uh, I'm trying to use words and not just rage. Well, but some, you said something to me years ago that's always that's always stuck with me, and in my relationship with this moniker, this title. I both I both like it and I dislike it. And the title was Nanny State. Right? And to me this just reeks of a nanny state decisions. And in some cases I like the idea of a nanny. I like the idea of for those people who don't have a great understanding uh, you know that they're that they're led in the right direction, but but at what point do you go too far and just like nanny stating everything? And so that's question one to you, and then question two to you is if if we were to go to the end of the spectrum where it's become mandatory that you have to have all the nutritional information, all, you know, all of it on there, what are the potential negatives? We understand some of the positives, right? You, you've mentioned them, but what are some of the negatives that you see this as, you know, wait a second, if we do this, X could happen? Well, the concern for me with question two there is if we had to do a laboratory analysis of every single cask, you know, would it be enough to state the general ingredients of a whiskey and have that come out to be nutrition and calories? Or would we have to analyze every single cask? That would be a non-starter for independent bottling. Yeah, I, you know, I would hope that... The <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong here, but I would hope... The nanny state has no interest in your hopes, Joshua. But, right, no there, interest. There, there's a mathematical equation to dictate how much duty that we have to pay on every single bottle. So I would hope that a similar mathematical equation of, you know, how much alcohol is in what kind of bottle equals how many calories per dram and that may change depending on what the ABV is. If they don't do that, that could be a potential downfall. My concern, my biggest concern is at least at least on the TTB side and I don't want to slag off the TTB. I think in general the idea of the TTB is to protect consumers, right? That's the idea behind it. The unfortunate thing... That is definitely the idea behind it. That is it, the yes. idea behind it. However, there are so many different kinds of spirits, so many different countries of origin, that not every TTB agent can be the expert. And so I see, at least on the U.S. side of things, if, if new things get into place for UK labels that the UK producers want to just homogenize their labels so that this stuff just goes on, on all of the labels that it, A, 
will confuse the hell out of the TTB, and B, have the TTB consider some of these regulations being put into place for American bottles, and then C, just by extension, is going to make them even less of experts on these labels, and it's going to cause all sorts of issues from a compliance and approval standpoint. And so while I, I understand the the spirit, see what I did there? Uh, Always. You, you know, of, of what the AHAs is trying to do, I think it's just going to cause all sorts of strange compliance issues. I would much rather see different laws be put into place just like they did in the UK. You've got a zero tolerance. That's cool. That that helps curb drunk driving. Is people's understanding of alcohol making you fat a ubiquitous understanding? Are there other ways to let people know rather than put it on a label that no one reads anyway? Just very quickly, when I heard you saying it back there, this is why I prefer the term drink driving rather than drunk driving. Because, you know, growing up in the southwest of Scotland, somewhat rural community, a lot of rural pubs, you could have a pint of lager with your lunch mm -hmm. and still go drive your car, right? Just, just fine. Just tickety-boo. The fact that we're now down to zero there is, is equivocating drink driving with drunk driving. Mm. And I, think that's, I think that's a mistake. And, and if you speak to any rural publican, they will also tell you it's a mistake because their industry, even pre-COVID, was going down the toilet because people weren't coming out for country lunches, yeah. right? Because you couldn't have a beer with it. And so just, just when I heard you say that there. The other thing for me is on our labeling for UK and Europe, we have a pregnant lady warning mm -hmm. with the do not sign going right through her belly, yeah. which I think is a bigger problem than drinking, but that's it, another story. It just means don't get women pregnant. I think that's all right. that means. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a terrible but, symbol. Anyway, continue. <laughs> but we don't have the number of units no. on our label. And, and so that I actually think that would be a useful thing. As I was mentioning earlier, certainly for me growing up when units were being introduced, none of us really knew what any of it meant. I haven't lived in the UK now for, you know, 18, 19 years. Uh, I'm temporarily blanking on what year it is. Um, <laughs> I haven't lived there in a long time. Perhaps uh -huh. units are now, you know, much more prevalent in daily discussion, usual discussion. Mm -hmm. But it would be interesting to have your bottle of whiskey say, you know, at the ABV that we're filling it at, it'd be interesting to say this bottle is 25 total units. Right? Mm -hmm. So you at least know if you've got 700 mil in front of you, you kind of ballpark know how many units are you talking about? And you also know if I'm allowed 14 units in a week, I should probably go easy on drinking half this bottle. Do you think people will pay attention to the, the, the units? I mean, maybe. Not, not in terms of their behavior, no, but I think it would be useful for a unit to mean something. Mm. Like if I come up and I say, here, I've got this coat for sale, it's going to cost you 25 units. You might be curious how much a unit is, right? <laughs> and that's always been my problem with this, whether it's the aha or what have you. You just bandy around units. Who gives a fuck, right? Who gives a flying fuck? I'm 14 units. Okay, thanks, Dad. I'll be careful, right? It means nothing. But at least in the context of putting units on a bottle, you might get a sense of what it is, or number of units on a six pack of cans, you might have a sense. Yeah. Not, you know, we all know that eating a full pizza is really bad for you. We also know it's incredibly delicious, and we are not against doing it from time to time, right? If they stick on that, this whole pizza is, you know, 16,000 calories, mm. I'm just going to feel worse when I start eating a second one. Right, but you're not going to stop. Gonna... It's not going to stop you. No, <laughs> of course I'm not. Do you know what, Joshua? Yeah, you, this is going to blow your mind. Do you know that people still smoke cigarettes? No, they don't. No one smokes cigarettes. Right, right. Nope. right. Yep. right. It's amazing. Everything that we know about cigarettes, all the warnings that exist on cigarette packets, the price of cigarettes, the fact that you can no longer look at cigarettes when you buy them. Right, people still smoke. 
It's remarkable. So, so let's yeah. just give them some information and move on with our lives, right? I do agree with you. I, I just... <sighs> yes, I agree with you. However, 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 I have a bit of a concern about how they rate these units because let's let's compare, right? If one unit could equal basically one ounce of whiskey. Now, granted, that's 40%, right? But one pint of beer equals three units. I have a feeling drinking 14 ounces of whiskey is going to mess you up more than drinking five pints. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe it's equal. Maybe you can't. <laughs> I love watching you do math on the fly. Well, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to think of like, what's going to get you more drunk? Do you think you, do you think all of it, Joshua, just drink all of it. Like it's 14 units. Who cares? Joshua and Jason urge you to not be a silly Billy or an insane Jane. If you're going to drink 14 units of alcohol, then stay home and do it. Don't get into any vehicle or try to operate machinery. You're dafty. So here's the thing, right? So, and I, we're going to get out of here on this. We never did answer whatever your first question was. We never did answer it. We start, we jumped into question two and then riffed on it a little bit. And now I'm going to get us out of here on this. The other week, I had a, a bit of a serious tasting. And then the next morning, I had blood work done with the doctor. Oh, right. Uh, and ended up being sent for a liver ultrasound, right? Which... I'm pleased to say I passed with flying colors because go. I didn't drink for the week uh, when it was scheduled for, right? And then when I spoke to my doctor afterwards, I said, so what's the takeaway from this? And you know what he said? Mm. He said what all doctors say, eat less, drink less, exercise more, right? And no matter how much information, aha, want to give the drinking public, it's going to be no different <laughs> from the general advice <laughs> that all of our doctors give us, uh -huh. which we heed sometimes when we're feeling okay, we ignore when we want to go out and have fun with our friends. That's how so many of us operate. And why are we trying to overly complicate that, right? Yeah. So it's, it sounds like what you're saying. Do we have to put on the nutritional stuff? Do we have to put on the, the number of unit stuff on our labeling? Labeling? Yeah, that's fine. Bring it on. But at the end of the day, don't drink and drive and just use your goddamn common sense. Is that what you're saying? That's how a lot of our conversations end up, Joshua, is you and I just saying, if we used common sense, <laughs> we'd probably be a lot better off. It, it just, uh, yeah. It's, but what's, what's interesting is here's, here's a f two full organizations, the AHAs, the AHA, mm -hmm. and, and then you've got the chief medical officer, right, that's representing the UK, having this massive argument over what should go on labels. Meanwhile, if they just said, people, use your common sense, <laughs> <laughs> right? right? Try to eat fewer deep fried pizza suppers. Okay. <laughs> That's how I live my life every single day. Yeah. Like I try to minimize the number of deep fried pizza suppers I eat with pickled eggs and pickled onions and a can of iron brew, right? But you know what? I think lack of common sense is, is how we get Brexit. It's how we get so, so many other things. So I guess you can't necessarily uh, let people count, let everybody count on their common sense. It's a democracy, Joshua. There's going to be winners and losers. That is true. <laughs> okay, this has been Extra Extra. It's all about whiskey. <laughs> You've been Joshua Hatton. I've been Jason Johnston Yellen. Mm -hmm. And we'll do this again next time. Cheers, listeners. Cheers, everybody. Chin chin. Wait, you're supposed to say that. Cheers, everybody. Chin chin. Two chins. Cheers. Bye. Bye.